7 million people, 8,000 skyscrapers, one of the planet's most densely populated cities, crammed onto a few tiny islands. Agriculture almost does not exist in Hong Kong, with only a little over a percentage of land used for farming. But some are trying to find alternative spaces to grow food. This is a vegetable garden that seems no different from any other. But it's in an unlikely place, above the rooftop of a 14-story building in eastern Hong Kong. Looking down from above, the patch of green stands out in the concrete jungle. It's a patch of hope that agriculture can thrive even in one of the world's most congested cities. Osper Lam started operating this farm five years ago. He is the first man in the city to grow food on the rooftop of skyscrapers. The farm, less than a quarter of a football court in size, has 500 planter boxes. Each box is for rent at 20 US dollars a month and is capable of producing 14 kilograms of vegetables a year. Osborne now has three vertical farms in different locations, helping city gardeners enjoy fresh and organic produce. He says market demand is huge. If you look at it you know, from the Google map, I mean, uh, especially a city like Hong Kong is very congested, you know, uh, uh, but you can still see a lot of rooftop, you know, that's left unused or unattended. Um, so if by making use of this rooftop, which has good sunshine, you know, good air flows, and turn it into vegetable production, it could be a way to solve, you know, I mean, the, uh, the, the food supply, even though it starts with a minimal, you know, sort of percentage. In the, in the food supply chain. But it is a very valuable, low, really low carbon footprint vegetable production. The space-starved city produces only 2% of its own food. The rest largely needs to be trucked in from the Chinese mainland. So more and more people who demand local organic food are looking skyward. It is a congested city already, and it has an all-year-round uh, climate or weather for, for growing vegetables. So unlike, you know, Tokyo or New York, I mean, it is very cold in the winter. But in Hong Kong, it's in the tropical, you know, zone, so we can grow vegetables all year round. The soil is specially um, prepared for the, um, uh, the climate here, because in Hong Kong, occasionally you have really serious rainfall. The soil needs good drainage, you know, in order to make it suitable for the, for the crops. Dixon Despomier, an ecologist at Columbia University, introduced the concept of vertical farming in 1999. It creates a world where every town can have their own food source and where an elevator ride can transport people to nature's grocery store. It's not just about feeding people, but also protecting the environment. Well, you don't just have a, a so-called sky woodland. You also have a high attraction for both people and wildlife. And with regard to wildlife, you can uh, enhance the urban biodiversity in our city. And of course, with, the, with woodland or vegetation on the rooftop, you can also cool the city very effectively. And for those living on the top floor, if you have a green roof above you, you will have a much cooler indoor space so you would use uh, much less air conditioning and it will also reduce the effect of climate change. So experts say vertical greening is a good way to green Hong Kong. Gardens on the roofs, gardens on the walls. Located in an old industrial area, this old building brings vitality to the dense blocks. Its designers say the target is to create some casual green space for its users and the nearby neighborhood. The roof garden and also the vertical green wall will have a three major benefit for us. I think the first one is about the amenity. 
Everyone would like to have a look with going to the vertical green mode. It looks very nice, very green. It's like a green building. And second, it's about the environmental benefit. Green roof and the vertical green mode can mitigate the heat island effect, which is a major thing that we are now trying to tackle in the urban context. And second, it can help the insulation of the building envelope. That means that you have a better protection for the building from the solar heat gain. So in that case, you can reduce your building energy requirements. So I think all those three elements is very good benefit of having a greenery in the urban context. Architects say vertical greening is a growing trend, and they are working towards that direction. Taking the concept further, one Spanish architect even proposed building 185 meter farm towers in one Hong Kong district. Made of lightweight recycled materials, the towers would grow food from liquid nutrients instead of soil. On a series of rotating floor plates, that would give props the maximum amount of sunlight. The idea drew mixed reactions from residents. They look very fanciful on paper, but I'm always wary of the um, sustainability of such um, endeavors because, uh, first of all, it's very expensive to build. And then secondly, it's not easy to maintain. And thirdly, you have to find the right technology and materials, and uh, of course, the maintenance skills to, to run all these. As there are still challenges to make such fantasy buildings come to life, it's more practical to green the existing buildings. Imagine a city where food can be produced, where it's consumed, where skyscrapers are filled with flowers, fruits, and vegetables. Like Osbert, people hope that one day, the patch of green in the concrete jungle can be expanded to a green paradise.